Well, if you brought your Bibles this morning, and I pray you did, and I also pray you come into God's house to uh, see what He's got for us, uh, expecting to see and hear what God has in store or fixing to set in place for you in, uh, to rep- you know we represent God's kingdom, amen? amen? We are the church, not the structure, and I'll explain that. But mainly, we are God's church. Whether we're in here or we're out there, we're still God's church. God's people is God's church. Amen? So if you brought your Bibles this morning, I I want you to open them up to Ephesians. Ephesians, that's right after Galatians. uh, Ephesians chapter 2. And I didn't even mark mine this morning, so I'm turning with you. Um, Galatians, Ephesians. Uh, this is the church <clears throat> of Ephesus. Paul had a lot to say to the church of F- Ephesus. I'm sorry, it's, yeah, chapter 2 of Ephesus, Ephesians rather. And we're going to begin reading. I want to read verses 1 through 4, but the main meat of the message this morning is verses 4 through 10. So we'll begin reading as soon as I get my page unstuck. In verse 1 of chapter 2, and may God bless the reading of his word, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 Here we go. And you, that means us, or that means the church, he's talking to Ephesus. He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's the devil, the spirit who know who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But, and I love this, you ready? But God, who in rich who is rich in mercy, Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know what that means? That means you got a a place in heaven for sure. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, and, and, and Brandy, you ought to know this verse. I know it was in one of your Awana verses. Do you remember this verse? For by grace are ye saved. For by grace are ye, say that with me. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. What is that saying? Brother Mike, it ain't nothing we can do. And I often use this verse when I am witnessing to a Jehovah Witness. Because, see, Jehovah Witnesses believe that you have to work your way into heaven. The only way you can get there is by your works. Well, that's not what this says. It says through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That means we can't take credit, Cole, for anything God does. Though a lot of us would like to. Though a lot of it, that's why he did Gideon the way he did. He had to take Gideon down to ground zero so Gideon would have to say, only God could have done this. He kept taking all them soldiers away from him. He started off with a whole bunch and ended up with very little. But he got, you know what? The amazing thing about that whole story is that the, the army that, that was coming against him in multitudes, couldn't even count the camels, was down in this big valley, down in a valley, right? And he told Gideon, Gideon, go up on top of the mountain, circle that mountain with your 300 not 300,000, 300, and have them light that lantern. Let them light that lantern, and when they do, shout and, and blow the trumpet. Well, that's all it took. 
And then all the soldiers thought they were surrounded, freaked out, turned on each other, killed each other, and it was over just like that. You don't think the same thing can happen in Ukraine? I mean, if we put God on a shelf and just put him aside, Tim, and don't think that... I've been thinking about that from day one. God could do the same thing over there. He could have all those Russians turn on each other, start shooting at each other, and Ukraine sat back, get some popcorn, and watch the show. That's the kind of God we serve. And he's still alive, by the way. He's not dead. And then we'll continue reading. Verse 10. For, we are in verse 10, right? Yes. For we are, listen, this is the key verse to the whole message. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For we were created for by his good works, not for our good works. In Christ Jesus, nonetheless, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, it's time the church spoke out. It's time the church stood up. It's time, Lord God, we gave you heart service instead of lip service. It's time, Father, we took a stand for what we believed in and we believed for what we stand on. And may we never, ever forget, Lord God, we are your workmanship. You formed us in our mother's womb, not to be pew warmers, not to be quiet as a church house mouse, but loud as a grasshopper mouse. And may you get all the glory for the message this morning. Lead me, Father, anoint me with the Pentecostal Holy Ghost fire from heaven so that the word is delivered. I pray, God, you rain down on this sanctuary this morning. For it's in your precious and holy name we pray and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. I'm still struggling because I'm not hearing enough about God. I'm sorry. You ought to be disappointed and you ought to be upset this morning if you are a workmanship under Christ Jesus created beforehand for his works. And if you're, you ought to be disgraced this morning and just disgusted that you're not hearing enough about God. And I'm talking about from Christians. I'm not talking about the world, Cole. You're not going to hear much about church or God or Jesus or anything from the world. We read that in the beginning of the chapter here. But what about the church? What about his bride? The reason I bring that up is because we may talk about it in here, but are you talking about it out there? Are you quiet as a church house mouse, or are you as loud as a grasshopper mouse? Who in here knows what a grasshopper mouse is? Raise your hand. Good. I'm the only one. Uh, I'm boasting, right? A grasshopper, and I'll explain to you what a grasshopper mouse is next. But let's talk about a church house mouse, Brandy. You never hear them, you never see them, but you sure do see what they do. And they leave a trail of you know what behind. Amen? A church house mouse. A church house mouse, Brother James, hides a lot. The thing is, when church ain't in, goodness sakes alive, he's everywhere and all over the place. But when church is in, he's hiding. Well, in the Christian walk, similar to that, or should I say God's so-called Christians, I'm preaching to the church this morning in case you're wondering. What about, the, the if, 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 if I try to, to run on parallel, the Christian and the church house mouse. When they're out, when when the church is outside, the church house mouse is wide open. Can't be quiet. Goes and does what he wants. Tears up whatever he wants. Don't care of the destruction they leave behind. 
They just want it. They go for it. They tear it up. Don't care because it ain't theirs. They didn't pay for it. Makes no difference to them. Sound familiar? When we are outside of the church, in other words, when we're, when, when we're not in church service, when church service isn't in front of us, what are we doing outside? Are we running around doing whatever we want, looking at whatever we want, watching whatever we want, talking however we want, and tearing up whatever, and just whatever, Caleb, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, I'm not in church. I've heard people say I can act how I want Monday through Saturday, but it's Sundays I have to watch what I do. Let me tell you something, that person's in trouble. Because God watches us from Sunday to Sunday. He don't take a break. He's everywhere, Sister Kim. He's omnipotent. He sees all. He knows all. He hears all. So we're not hiding anything. We might be hiding it from each other. Might be hiding it from our spouse or teen, youth. You might be hiding it from your parents. But let me tell you something. God's seeing it. He knows it. He's he's there. He's right there. Jake, do you know how I'm able to say that God is exactly where we are? Sees everything we see, hears everything we hear, and what we say. Do you know how I know that? Because the minute you got down on your knees and you gave your heart to this awesome king, Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he comes in you, dwells within you. So if he's seeing what my eyes are seeing and he's hearing what my ears are hearing, that means he's wherever I'm at. Right? So that's how he knows exactly what I'm doing. I've had to explain that before to a a 10-year-old. And that's the only way I knew how to do it. I said, this is how I explain it, brother. I said, well, well, look at it like this. Let's say that I'm able to see what your eyes see. And I'm able to hear what your eyes hear. And I know where you're at because I can see through your eyes and I can hear through your ears. I even feel your heart beating because I'm inside you. He goes, I don't want you inside me. (laughs) I said, but God wants to be inside you. That's how he knows everything you're doing. And I was helping his parents uh, teach him discipline not to do things. You know, how did they know he was doing it? And this, that, and the third. But that's the only way. you got to give everybody your... Church, you've got to be able to give whoever you're talking to a mental picture. Because there is so much that's been put in their brains. They have been destroyed by social media, by television, by radio. I mean, you name it. They've heard it or seen it. And you've got to reprogram that brain. That's why Paul said that we are to, do, to, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That means in God's Word on our knees, in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But, if, but, if, but there's a lot of God's children who are like that church house mouse when they think that the church folk or God ain't around, they're running around doing whatever they want, saying whatever they want, uh, talking however they want, and just causing chaos. And let me, let me share this with you. Um... When, just because we're not around each other, do you know why, Brother James, that a lot of people, a lot of Christians, now listen to me, do you know why they watch things on television that they shouldn't be watching or they don't want us to, we don't want each other to know we're watching? Do you know why we do that, Brandy? It's a lust that is within us, that old person that knows we can't do it anymore, so we take joy in watching others do it, and we don't have to worry about the consequences of it because they're the ones doing it, not us. Now, I want you to think, ponder on that for a minute. Otherwise, why would you want to watch it? Why would you watch something like that, knowing that that's not how God wants us to act, that's not what God wants us to watch, but yet, what does it matter? It's just television. It ain't real. It's real. Because everything you're seeing on television is being done in the world today, and a whole lot worse. I find it rather ironic, Olivia, why 
there's so many programs on split homes, right? Gay marriage, you're going to see a gay scene in everything you watch. I'm sorry. And you know what? Get used to it. You ought to have, you, you should accept it. No, I shouldn't. I'm not accepting anything God don't accept. And if we do, then we're in trouble. Some might say, well, as long as, listen, uh, as long as, I've heard people say this, well, as long as it don't make its way into my house, I'm not worried about it. It's in your house. You're watching it. That's right. Can't say that anymore. Because right. everything that you watch on television, I don't care what it is. Even the news, for crying out loud. Now, here's where the church house mouse things come in, Kayla. You better not say nothing about it or I'm going to sue you. Here. So what, Brother James? Are we just supposed to not say something about one thing, but we can say something about anything else in here? Your yay be yay or your nay be nay. That's what Jesus said. Yes or no? You're either for me or you're against me. And he also said that if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He also said that if you love the world, you don't love him. I didn't say that. God did. There's no mediocre, Tim. You can't be a church house mouse out in the world and why, and, 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 a, and a, 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 a grasshopper mouse in here. People think, Brother James, that when they come to church, that it's supposed to sing the doxology and worship and, and a song and, and sit down and hear a message and you've had church. That's not church. That's ritual. That's, right. That's tradition. Yep. Church is when the Pentecostal Holy Ghost fire from heaven falls on the congregation, Mad Max, and they're so eat up with guilt over their sin that they're begging God at the altar to forgive them for what they've done. That is what church is. It's where Jesus leaves, is, is walking the pews from Shekinah glory. Brandy, he comes by like a breeze of wind and you feel him and you know he's there and you feel it and you want more. That's what church is. Amen. You know what happens after that? You go outside and you start shouting and proclaiming the name. You're not like a church house mouse on Sunday morning, quiet so nobody can hear you. What kind of worship would, if somebody was recognizing you for something you've done, since we all love that, we like to be recognized, right? If somebody was giving you an award for some great achievement accomplished, and there was thousands of people there to watch you receive it, and they hand it to you, and nothing said, no yells, no claps, no shouts, nothing. It's as quiet, so quiet, you can hear a pin drop. Are you going to feel like you achieved anything? What do you think the Holy Ghost feels when he comes in his own house, the one he made, the one he built, the one he anointed, and he don't hear nothing from God's children? Why would he waste his time, Brother James? Ryan wouldn't accept that reward, or he wouldn't want, felt like anything. He'd walk away defeated, though God will never be defeated. Amen. Don't take that wrong. But my point is, when we come in God's house, we are, we're in here to get filled up so we can go outside and empty. That's the whole purpose. What are you sharing with all those other grasshoppers out there that's bouncing everywhere? Ain't got no security. Ain't got no safety. Ain't got, all they got is what Caleb just said, fear. And yet here you are in here getting all this, that, and the third, and ain't saying nothing about it outside. It's time the church spoke up. Amen. I mean, have we not been quiet enough for two years? Tim, when they told us we had to shut our doors? It's time we started talking, sharing the gospel, every single one of us. This young adults class, I'm telling you, you need it. Now, you might be thinking you're fine, you're going to get through life. That's fine. Listen, I know better because been there, done that, and felt the same way, by the way. Don't tell me how to live my life. I'm doing just fine on my own. 
Let me tell you what you know. You know everything about nothing that's coming your way. But it's all right here. And I guarantee you, you need this class. You need it. I needed it. I needed it, and you're going to need it. Because, listen, I thought it was rough when I was your age. I couldn't even imagine what it's like being your age today. But I will tell you this. I can tell you what happens. I know the end. I know what happens. I've read it. I've been part of it. And you know what I was thinking about this morning? I was praying for my family and and y'all and and the world in general. But mainly there was specific prayers I had. And I said, Lord, I don't know why. I don't know why they're in such turmoil and and, and, in such a storm right now. And then he said, yes, you do. Because I'm building them up and I'm making them stronger, just like I did you. And when I get done with them, trust me, they'll be soldiers. They won't be church house mice. They'll be field rats, and they'll be making sure everything's given out. Come get filled up, go outside, empty it out. Come get filled up, go outside and empty it out. That is what God wants us to do. I mean... (laughs) Listen, what if you ain't emptying? Where, where is all this going? I mean, I, I can only take so much, and I'm either going to blow up or I'm going to let it out. Right? What happens when you put too much air in a balloon, Brother Randy? It blows. Kind of like a woman when she's on number seven on her uh, emotional level. And 10 is the limit, Mr. T. I'm going to tell you that from personal experience, too. Don't go, don't go past 9. Say, stay 9 and under. Try to keep that 7 at a 4. Because when he hits 7, you're only three clicks away from an atomic bomb. <laughs> Amen? So let's keep, let's keep it below 7. My point is, why aren't we speaking out more? Why aren't we standing up for what we believe in? I know what's going to happen, but I'm not going to let somebody shut my mouth about my Jesus who done what he done for me and what I know awaits me nonetheless, but I have been saved by grace and mercy. Love is the last thing. You know what, Brother James? God didn't save you because he loved you. If that was the case, he would have back doors to heaven and he would say, come on in, I love you. And I know some might say, well, what about John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a beautiful verse. But God saved you by grace and by mercy. Love, he loves everybody. But the only way you're going to get in heaven is through salvation. And the only way you're going to receive salvation is through grace. And the only way that grace is going to become real to you is when you realize the mercy of the cross. That right there, Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. That is grace, that is mercy, and that is love. Grace, mercy, love. That's what it is. Have you told anybody about it lately? I mean, are, you, are we so wrapped up in what's going on all around us that we seem to forget who's living within us? Church house mouse. Now let's talk about this grasshopper mouse. And since y'all don't know nothing about him, I get to tell you all about this little guy. He's more, his, his living quarters is in the Serona Desert. And Tim, if you're in that desert at night, you will hear the smallest, faintest howl. And some's mistaken it for a wolf or a coyote way off. But this little bitty fellow's within 15 feet of him. And he's known as the grasshopper mouse. 
little bitty guy. His, his adversary or his enemy is the scorpion. But this little guy ain't afraid of nothing. He's been known to jump on full-size animals. Ain't scared of them. If they're within his territory, they're going to get jumped on. Well, let me say something about that. All this is God's territory, and so are we. So if anybody's coming towards us, just remember that small, distinct how. But this little guy, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what he does, Brandy, when he gets bit by a scorpion. When he gets stung by that scorpion, he takes that scorpion's venom and uses it as an antidote. Doesn't even affect him. Has no effect on him whatsoever. And that's the worst thing that can hurt this little guy unless a, 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 a rattlesnake, sidewinder is what they're known as, or a venomous snake catches him from behind, but these little guys are so fast not even snakes can get them. But that's the only thing that can, the snake. Sound familiar? Amen. But let's talk about this little bitty guy, this grasshopper mouse he ain't quiet and he wants everybody to know his territory does everybody know what territory Jesus owns in you have you shouted that out lately have you broadcasted to everybody that's around night and day I belong to Jesus I'm blood bought Jesus loves me died and gave himself for me and I ain't ashamed of the gospel of Christ because I know it is the power unto my salvation amen we sang a song just a minute ago. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. His blood has left a crimson stain that washes white as snow. Told anybody about that lately? Come on, grasshoppers. I don't hear you howling like you should. Amen. And neither does God. But this little bitty guy, Brandy, he, he, he goes out at night patrolling his territory. I mean, he's all over. He don't care who sees him. He don't care who hears him. He's just about what he's about. He's going to protect what's his, what God has given him. How about what God has given us? Who is going to protect them because they have no idea what's coming? But that snake is, and so is that, that, that scorpion because they, there is... There's so many things in the world today that is poison and they'll take you down. Amen. But not the grasshopper's mouse. Whatever he's bit by Brother James, even a, ain't even a venomous snake, it, he can take that venom and, and turn it into an antidote. I, you know what? I, I got to thinking about that, Sister Melba. How many of us has been bit? And has some poison running in us this morning. You know, just just a good old bite, Brother James. Just been bit by somebody. Whether it be your boss or your family. Most of the ones that most of the ones we get bit by, special K, is our own family. Our own family will bite us before the old nasty world will. And we get bit, Caleb, and we get some of that venom and injected in us, and it makes us sick, brother. Spiritually sick. Paul's telling the Ephesians right here, you listen, for by grace are ye saved, through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You were created for his, by his, in his workmanship. Everything we do, we ought to be doing to glorify God, number one. Amen. But mainly, listen, you know, everything we can do is because of that mercy, that grace, and that love. What about beforehand? We read it in the first three verses, Brandy, what we were like beforehand. Let's rewind. Let's go back and read it again. Verse 1. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, hallelujah, not of the devil, beseech you to walk worthy. I'm sorry, that's chapter 4. Um, chapter 2 of Ephesians. Man, these new Bibles are awesome. Big words, but pages just love sticking together. I tell you, it's a good example on how marriage should be. I mean, why not be able to be peeled apart? Hallelujah. Listen, 
And you, he made alive. You're not dead anymore. Listen, Cole, you're not dead anymore. You were dead until he made you alive. Do you know that, church? We were dead in trespasses and sin before Jesus saved us and made us alive. There ain't nothing can touch you. You know, I got to thinking about this, too. The power. The power. You know, Brother James, he waited forever to give us the nuclear power. I wonder why. You see why. Now everybody threatens everybody with it. And don't think there's not one person that wants to do it. He knew we couldn't handle it. That's why he waited so long. Man will destroy themselves. And then let's talk about the the power in the church. The, The God coming in and touching and healing. He does it. But he also knows there's a limited amount of power that he needs to give to certain ones because he knows they'll take all the credit and they'll say, look what I did. Good grief. I want his power in here. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I just hope I'm clean enough that he can use me to do it. That's my fear. But he says, Brother James, you were a, I have made you alive. You're no longer dead to trespasses and sin. Who were dead to trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. That's the old James. That's the old J.R., old Denise, old Caleb, old Cole. That's not who we are now, or it shouldn't be. But what do they see? Are they seeing a church house mouse? Or are they seeing this little grasshopper guy? Huh? Oh, yeah, he's a Christian. You know what? I, I tell you, it was a blessing Friday at work. To God be the glory for what I... This is for you, Lord, because this ought to show the church how much you've improved me. I was in there, and I was walking around, ranting and raving about something, and I kept saying, Dad, go. And, 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 and Joseph said... I used to work with a guy like you who just absolutely refuses to cuss. And I said, why would I do that? If I, I, I ain't saying I don't want to, I'm having to bridle my tongue, but I don't want to, I'm not that man anymore, Joseph. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm blood bought, brother, and I need to be setting an example for you. And glory to God, somebody sees it. But that's that grasshopper mouse. They know where I stand in that office. I'll run them slap out of the trailer if they start saying GD and all that. I don't care who it is. Don't cuss my God. That's my territory. Sting me, bite me, do whatever, but you're not going to get away with it. But he says we're the, the, the old man, we walked around according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. We know who that is. The Bible says he's the prince of the air. Talking about the devil. This is his turf. You honestly think that if you're not out there being the grasshopper mouse, that the enemy can't latch onto you and pull you wherever he wants you to go and do whatever he wants you to do? Look around. It's pretty simple. I see it everywhere I go. But we've got to be the grasshopper mouse. We've got to get it out. We've got, I'm telling you, I don't know about y'all, but quarantine has messed a lot of people up. I know it has our children. Although it should have been a great opportunity, Queen Anne, for us to tell them to go outside and play for a change. Instead of staying in here watching TV and playing video games. Go outside and build a fort. A what? Go outside and break the yard. What? What's a rake? You know what I used to hear? Get out there and get the uh, get, pull the hill on them taters. And you didn't just, I'm telling you, that's work. You, you pull a, a two-foot hill on a potato vine. Once it comes up out of the ground, you got to pull a two-foot hill on it. So when that vine comes out, there's taters everywhere underneath that dirt. Go outside and or go down the garden, pick the beans, the corn, the okra. You don't pick okra, you cut it. And you better wear a long sleeve shirt 
or you're going to get stuff. I'm, I'm allergic to it. I use that as an excuse. You know what Dad said? You got a coat, long sleeve shirt, get it on. I hated okra. I don't eat it to this day. I don't like strawberries either. There's a reason for that. But let's get back on the message. We've got to quit being church house mice and become grasshopper mouse and share the gospel. Get it out of your mouth. Get it out of your body. Get it out of your mind. So you can come back in here and get some more and take it back out there. But more importantly, let's start talking about it amongst our own family circles. I just want to say this. If God's not in your house, you're not going to know him in here. You're not going to know when he comes in here if he's not in your home already. And for the record, if the devil can get our houses, he's already got the church anyway. We better start watching what we're watching, listening to, or, or, or start listening to what we're listening to. You know, I, I, I didn't believe it, but Special K, I went back because I'm an 80s guy. I love 80s music. And Brandy will tell you that. She loves some of my 80s music. Uh, but my point is, some of the music I used to listen to back in the 80s, I was just the beat. I love the sound, the beat. But now that I hear the words, I was being programmed in 1980 and didn't even know it. And now I know why. If he was the angel of music in heaven, no wonder he's got such a pull with it down here. It literally does something to your subconscious mind. I'll be going down the road, Brother James, and I've got the 80s playing, and I usually do. On my Siri, whatever Siri, however you say that. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, satellite radio. And I'm going down there, and I'll get to jam, and Caleb, I'll just steadily be mashing that gas pedal and not even know it. And I'll look down, and it'll be at 80, sometimes 90 miles. I'll be like, whoa, what are you doing? You know what that's telling me? My mind ain't where it's supposed to be. Where's our minds at when it comes to this? Do you know enough about this to even be a grasshopper mouse? This is why, young adults, I want to teach you in this class. I want to equip you with what you need to make it out there, let alone be a grasshopper mouse. So no venom. Any venom that comes our way, and I want to close with this, because this was what I was thinking about this morning when Tucker bit me on the bed. Now, that hurt. I felt it, and, and I've got a hole there. Dog? Yeah, he's my dog. And I antagonized him like I usually do. Brandy will tell you uh, about Tucker. But I said, dang, Tucker, why'd you bite me that hard? Like, he really cares. <laughs> Uh, and, he, and he kept warning me because he'll, he'll lift his lips up and show his two-inch canines as I start to mess with him, and I think I can beat him, right? I think I'm quicker than he is. Don't happen. As a matter of fact, it don't happen. He's faster. Than, he's quick. He's really quick with those front teeth. Anyway, if he could talk, this is what he'd say, Caleb, because you're an idiot. <laughs> How many times, Master, have I bit you? It's like that old story. The devil, or the old, old rattlesnakes laying on the ground. Brother James, he can't get across the river. It's moving too fast. And he tells the old cowboy on the horse, will you pick me up and carry me across the river? And, and the cowboy says, no. I know the minute I pick you up, you're going to bite me. And the rattlesnake says, no, I won't. If you're willing to carry me across the river, I'm not going to bite you. I want to get over there. So eventually it wears on him, Tim, and he reaches down, and he picks the rattlesnake up. He, he's got a hold to it. He's going across that river. And as soon as he gets on the other side of the river, the rattlesnake bites him. And he drops the snake Cole, and he says, you told me you wasn't going to bite me. And the rattlesnake laughed at him and said, you knew I was a rattlesnake when you picked me up. 
That is what sin does to us. It's, it, there's just enough good, Caleb, uh, with it to make it uh, attractive for God's children, but it's eat up with a whole bunch of evil underneath. And as soon as you pick it up, Brother James, and you get to going with it, it's going to bite you. And when it bites you, Sister Melba, it injects you with that ungodly, worldly, traditional lies, and you've got venom running in you, and you've got to get to the medic and get that venom out. Amen. You know what that's called? Repentance. That's right. A good old dose of the Holy Ghost. That's what we need. I want y'all to stand with me. This little grasshopper mouse, I don't know what it was. Yeah, I do. I know why it was so intriguing to me. Because that little rascal will howl and tell everybody where he's at. He ain't scared of nothing. And I thought, Lord God, I want to be like that for you. And I want the church to know about this grasshopper mouse, Father. And I want them to know what you did for us where you are taking us from, where you are establishing us at, and then what awaits us when we're done. Good grief. You know what's so amazing about that grace and that mercy and that love? He doesn't kick you out. He doesn't push you away. He doesn't say, no, Brandy, enough's enough. You're no longer going to be forgiven. That's not what that says. That's not what the cross is. We're able to come up Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, night after night in our homes, on our jobs, and ask God, please, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for that. I did not. I'm sorry, Lord. I meant to do it, but I'm sorry I did, and I need you to forgive me. That's called forgiveness. You know what else it's called? Being found righteous through Christ Jesus. For it were not for that grace and that mercy and that love, we would still be that old person, Tim, that we read about in verses 1, through 1 2, and 3, that we should, we're just walking around dead. We were as dead as dead could be, and so are they. And Brother Mike, they're never going to be alive unless we're out there like that, grass, that grasshopper mouse screaming out loud, howling it out. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Don't ever be ashamed of him because he said, if you are ashamed of me down there, I'm going to be ashamed of you up here. Amen. And he should be. Amen. I don't know if there's somebody in here this morning that's wrestling with, with this or maybe you're up against this, this scorpion or this rattlesnake in your life that you're dealing with. But let me tell you something, grasshopper mouse. That very venom that he's biting you with and he and you feel like he's injecting you with or he's done put you in a place in your mind or your heart that you shouldn't be, make it an antidote with Jesus this morning. Just like that grasshopper mouse, you can come up here to the altar this morning and get some antidote to what you need to get rid of that venom that's running through your veins because it, you know where all veins lead to, right? Your heart. So wherever you're getting bit, it's going to eventually end up in your heart. And it's going to make you sick. Now only you know who you are. I can't make you come up here this morning. My job is done. I have given you what God wants you to have. Now he's telling you if you need an antidote or an, an, an antibiotic against this sickness, here I am. My grace, my mercy, and my love is waiting for you this morning. Otherwise, the service is over. Um, I believe that we're going to meet after the ladies are meeting afterwards, correct? But we got a communion first. I want everybody to be seated. Listen to me this morning. Listen to me, grasshoppers. This is a very serious thing that we're fixing to do in God's church the communion. And if you've got any sin in your life right now, whatever it is, before you take of this, you need to ask God to forgive. You need to be clean before you take of this communion because 
If you don't, there's a very good possibility you're going to end up sick. And I'm telling you, it ain't the kind of sick you've ever experienced. It could be the loss of someone. It could be a loss of your child. It could be whatever. God takes communion serious. And he gives us the opportunity to clean up before we take up. Amen? So I'm going to give everybody uh, a few minutes here before, as we're coming down, Brother James, to to, to take of the communion, um, to bow your heads and, and ask God, Lord, as David did, Lord, search my heart and try me and see if you find any inequity, inequity within me. I need to be clean this morning for your communion, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as others are praying this morning, I want to thank you, Lord God, that I even know what communion is. And Lord, how how it's it's personal to me. I, I picture the upper room, Lord God, and I know what's fixing to happen to you afterwards. And I know what you're doing there with the disciples and how much you love them, Lord God, and how much mercy and grace that they, they don't even know nothing about is fixing to be given to them when you get beaten and you get crucified on that cross. But you took time, Lord God, to have one last meal. And you explained to them, Lord God, what was coming and what this meal meant. Father, I ask you this morning, Lord Jesus, try and test me, Lord, my heart this morning. And God, if there's any sin within me, I ask you to please forgive me. I want to have clean hands and a pure heart, Lord God, when I take of this awesome communion in, in our church this morning. And Lord God, thank you for the grasshopper mouse. What a blessing, Lord Jesus. What an example we are to be like. We ought to be out howling it as loud as we can. Jesus saves. Father, we love you this morning. I pray your anointing upon this communion. I pray, Lord God, that all hearts are clear. And I pray that when we leave this sanctuary this morning, we're different than when we came in. For it's in your precious and holy name I pray, Lord. Amen and amen. amen. I'm going to ask if... Uh, Brother James, you and Brother Mike will come up and um, pass out um, I tell y'all this is a very special thing that we're doing this morning think about what Jesus was doing there at that last supper with his disciples and um, why he done it he wanted them to he was basically trying to tell them hey listen you you don't know what's coming but I do and you don't know how bad it's going to be but I do and I know the minute I'm struck, you're going to scatter. So I want one last night with my brothers, my soldiers. And he did. He, he fed them, he, and he even bathed them. He bathed their feet. Man, Brother James, what a blessing. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Brother uh, James, will you pray, Brother? Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. And as you take of this communion this morning, I want you to imagine you're in that upper room. Ryan, could you imagine? Man, 
It's like that movie, The Encounter. I would never have left that restaurant. He would have had to, he would have had to throw me out. They were right there with this chief. They didn't even know who they were with. They had no clue who they was with. They was with God in the flesh. Thank you, my brother. You know that's who Jesus was, right? It was God. It was God in the flesh. He left Shekinah glory, came down here, went through the whole birth thing and all like we do, come up as a kid at 11 years old teaching in the synagogue. Brother James, he was just like us. And this is what the scripture says about what we're fixing to do. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Amen and amen. You know, if there, we can't really say, Special K, that we don't know. We have no idea, Sister Angie, what, what we're supposed to do. That is just a lie. I mean, let, let, just right here, he blessed the food before he eat it. Oh, we blessing our food. Oh, I, I, I have took, I have gotten into it with, a, with my first bite and spit it right back in the plate and say, Dad, damn it, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. Please bless this food. And I'm sorry that my my uh, my gluttony. I, I'm hard on myself because I want to be better, Susu. And I'll never be able to give him back what he's given me. He gave me a beautiful daughter, a, a handsome son, and just the grandchildren that is, I can't even explain to you how blessed I am with to have them three. And he gave me a wife that loves me. A job. Transportation, clothes. And you guys, he gave me you. Now, y'all might not think that's a blessing, but I do. Amen? Amen. And then in verse 27, then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine, from now on until the day when I drink it, new with you in my Father's kingdom. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, how many of y'all knows the doxology? Raise your hand. Let's sing the doxology this morning. It's real simple. And here we go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures hear me low. Praise Him, all of ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. close the service.